What's up guys, welcome to Boost Vlogs. Today is gonna be a short little video. I am swapping out the turbochargers on the Miata. Did my drag racing with the 54R and now I'm gonna swap out to the GT 2860R. I just kinda wanted to do a size comparison since I had both turbos off the car and really do a side by side so you can get an idea on the different sizes of these turbos. I have this thing on a block of wood to bring it closer to the camera because you can see the 2860R has the downpipe studs, makes it sit up higher. I didn't want to give an illusion that it was, you know, so much more massive. So this is obviously the view with the compressor housings on. I know it can be a little deceptive because the 2860 actually has a three inch mouth where the 2554 has a two and a half inch mouth. It actually makes the compressor wheel look you know, as big or bigger because it's got such a small mouth. But if you look at the overall size of the housings, the 60R does have uh, quite a bit larger housing. Now when I remove these housings, you can see that the 60R definitely has a much larger compressor wheel and this has the ability to flow a lot more CFM. Not necessarily boost pressure, but CFM, which equates to horsepower. The 60R should also make more power per PSI because of its larger wheel, but it is harder to spin up because it is heavier. So just for comparison's sake, if I measure up the 60R wheel side by side with the 54R wheel, there's your extra six millimeters over on this side there. The inducer, or where the air comes into the compressor wheel, you can see it's also significantly larger. It doesn't seem like a big difference, just a few millimeters, but you'll see when I do the real performance testing how much of a difference a small change like that can make. Now to take a look at the hot side or the turbine housing and the turbine wheel, we'll start with the opening. The opening, you'll see, is the same on both housings. This way, whether you choose the 28R housing or the 25R housing, they'll bolt up to a T2 manifold without any flow issues. This port size does not change, and neither does the bolt pattern. You will notice the bolt holes are a little bit larger on my 54R. That's because I had to drill them out. I run a Bell Engineering manifold, which comes with 10 millimeter studs. The factory 25R and 28R turbine housings are designed for eight millimeter studs. So if you are swapping an out of the box Garrett turbo onto a Bell Engineering manifold, you do need to drill out your turbine housing to accept the larger studs. Now back here is where things really start to change as far as spool up characteristics. The turbine wheel on the 28R is a few millimeters larger, but one major difference you notice is the spacing between the fins on the turbine wheel. And paired with that, this is also the point 86 AR housing. The higher the AR, the slower the turbo will spool, but the more top end it will be capable of because the housing is not as restrictive to the exhaust flow. All right guys, well that's literally all I have for you. I hope you don't mind a short video. I hope you learned something. Thanks for tuning in to Boost Vlogs. I'll catch you in the next one.